Jeremiah chapter 5. And the Bible says, bear with me please in my recent diligences, <coughs> run! I can't do that no more. But you run ye to and throw through the streets of Jerusalem. This is God speaking to Jeremiah. Now, there's one thing that God and his prophets, he has them do some weird things. I think, is he, no, Ezekiel. He, he tells Ezekiel, get these little army men and get a cast iron pan and start playing with the army men. But it, it's, it's going to be the battle of, of Jerusalem. It's comical. Run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And see now. So do it right now. Did Jeremiah do it? I guarantee he did it. And no. You're going to do this now. You're going to know something. It's an illustration. And seek in the broad places. The wide streets. Broad is the, broad is the way that leads to destruction. But... That's not what we're talking about, and it's also what we're talking about. Broad is the way of destruction, but he's telling Jeremiah, go down the streets of Jerusalem and get the widest streets, physical, thereof. And if ye, you, Jeremiah, can find a man, a man, if there be any that execute judgment, Now, a lot of times in, in public ministry, I got, and it's not a wide street. It's, in fact, it's a street that many people don't even know. And the first one of the things, of, judge not least, you be judged. And then I had a guy come up, you know, he was judging me wrong and saying, you know what? And the thing is, and what, what God's telling Jeremiah, I want you to find somebody that properly finds judgment. I want you to find somebody that says, you know what you're doing right now? It's wrong. God said in his law, that's wrong. Nathan walked up to David and said, I mean, Thou art the man. And there have been prophets and there have been men of God throughout the Bible and walked up to rulers and kings and, and men and said, that's wrong. John the Baptist went to prison because, uh, because of... Uh, the daughter was somebody, I, I don't understand the relation, but that somebody had married the wrong woman. And he went to prison for it. And what God is telling Jeremiah, I want you to go find somebody who's telling somebody that according to what I have said, they have judgment. In order for God to say that to you, but somebody, you know, they're not going around, you did, you did. They're looking at their, listen, the Bible, Paul tells us we are also to judge ourselves. So when I'm on the street, somebody comes, you're hypocritical, you judge me. Listen, I judge myself. Now, I know they didn't, I know they didn't have traffic lights back then, but you want somebody to say that red light means red no matter what. Now, in Daytona Beach, Florida, and probably where you are, there are people that red doesn't mean stop. That's somebody who's not using judgment. Somebody who steps out in the street without looking both ways. That's not using judgment. Well, I can get a lawyer. You can get a lawyer and be in a hospital for the rest of your life. That's your fault. When I grew up as a child, uh, parents would spank their children if they stepped out in the, in the thing. I remember we were in a many times in a grocery store parking lot. I would step out, you know, that little area between the parking lot and the store, I just go step right out in that and start heading to the store. Man, I get walked. That was the street. And I one time I told mom, mom, it's not a street. It's a parking lot. I got walked for questioning my mom. Rightfully. You don't go anywhere where there's cars without looking. And we got a whole race of people today. They don't judge. And they think, well, if I end up in the hospital, I'll get myself 1-800, I'll find a lawyer, and, and you know, if, if it's been raining, and I step in the grocery store, and I walloop myself on the floor, well, that lawyer is going to get me to sue them. Well, that don't do you no good if you got pain for the rest of your life, and it sure don't do you no good if you end up dead. Judgment. I want you to find somebody that's got judgment. Now, there's still judgment in, in America today. There's some people that will judge right and wrong. 
There are people who will look at something and they'll say, you know what, that's not good value for the dollar. That's old. I'm not buying it. I grew up in, in a store, I mean, where you had actually butchers. I remember the book. They, they cut the meat right there, and they, they ring the little butcher bell. I remember that. You get in trouble by ringing the, door, the butcher bell all the time. But you would ring the, the butcher bell, and the guy would come out all in white with blood and all that. And you got anything fresher than this? Or you know what? I don't have that many people. Can you cut? I need three. I got three people. Can you cut me enough for three people? And then you go in there and cut three people, and then you put the rest on the shelf and get... I mean, I don't need all this choice of me. It might go bad. That's judgment. And they said there was a time, uh, I very rarely remember being young, but they said there was a meat shortage in the 70s. And I forget what it was. I don't remember what it was. But they said that there are people who do archaeology digs and, and training in, in dumps, city dumps. And they found all this cut of meat in the garbage. They bought it. Since there was no meat, we're going to get meat, but we didn't know what to do with the meat that we bought. We don't know what the meat is. So it ended up being thrown out. That's not judging. So God tells Jeremiah, I want you to find somebody who's doing judgment. And seek is the truth. Now, you ain't going to get anybody who turns on the media going to get the truth. You're going to not going to find somebody with a perverted Bible and the truth. You're not going to find anybody who's in a church that does not serve the Lord correctly. You're not going to find the truth. A lot of your denominations and your Baptists have <coughs> no truth. You're not going to find truth in a public school system. They're erasing the history and truth. And there are certain careers you're not going to find the truth. So when God said, Jeremiah, I want you to find judgment and truth, like today and in Jeremiah's time, you know how hard that would be found? And do you know I read that Jeremiah did not find one person? Watch. I, God, will pardon it. Now, a pardon is for somebody who is guilty. So what is the judgment and what is the truth? That God's going to pardon according to the definition of pardon that you must be guilty. Now again, I use this illustration, I've been in prison. And I've never had the warden go with me, but I've had the correction officers. I've had the, the, the chief of correction officers guide me a couple times to where I met with the, with the prisoners. But I never had the warden. And it'd be like the warden and the governor. And, and forget those presidential parties. That, that's, that's against the definition. But here's the, the, here's the governor and the warden. They're walking down the halls of a prison. And they go into the first cell. They say, hey, I don't know who's there, but I mean, there's people. hey, anybody guilty of their crime? And I've done this, you know. No, no, not me. I was framed. I was framed up. You know, my bad lawyer. And I, I tried that for an illustration one time. I thought, I said, anybody in this room here doesn't belong here. Every hand went up. That ruined my illustration. You can't get a pardon. So the warden and, and, the, and the governor steps out, walks him to the next one. Who's guilty? Oh, we're all guilty. I mean, we're not guilty. Our lawyer, I was framed, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, okay. They walk out, step out. They go into the, they go into another area. Well, and they open up the door and they walk in there. And they go to the group of men. Who here is guilty of the crime? And everybody, oh, I didn't. And then one little guy in the corner goes, me, sir. He said, well, can you just briefly just... I did it. I, I didn't mean to do it. I did it, and I'm guilty, sir. There's nothing more I can say. And the, and the warden opens up his briefcase, takes out a piece of paper, takes pen, signs a document, hands it over to the governor. The governor looks at it. He takes the document, signs it. He says, okay, here's your pardon. That guy 
gets a date where he gets set free. Everybody else doesn't get set free because a pardon is to say, I'm guilty. And when you come before Jesus Christ, it's not say this prayer. It's I'm guilty of the sins and I'm not worthy. There's your pardon. So with the definition of pardon, what's the judgment in the truth that God says, Jeremiah, go find somebody. He says, I want you to go find somebody who's going to judge themselves and find the truth about themselves that they have sinned against a holy and righteous God. So it's not looking at, oh, I'll judge you, I'll judge you, I'll judge you. It's, Jeremiah, I'm the guilty one. I'm the one that God is angry with. Or at least one of the ones that God is angry with. Now, you may not be the person, but you are one of the people. And God says, I will part in it. Jeremiah never found one. And though they say the Lord liveth, surely they swear falsely. And and remind yourself, and, and even a Baptist church, you get, oh, I'm a Christian, or I, 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 I do They may be lying to you. You don't know what they are on the outside of the church house. Don't take everybody at their, at their word. Take them at their life. What are they living? Because anybody can say anything. Oh Lord, are not thy eyes upon the truth? Oh yes. Jesus Christ is the truth. God cannot lie. Satan lied. Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Now we're at the point in Jeremiah, we're early in Jeremiah, we're after Isaiah. God has, has, has pronounced judgment on Judah. God has pronounced judgment on Israel. And they're not grieved. And there have been worldwide activities in 2020 and 2021. And people are grieved, but not towards God. Well, we need a better government official. We need a better vaccine. We need better masks. We need better laws. And we got a better, greatest God, and no, very rare have people turned to them. Thou hast consumed them. You see that? People died from COVID-19. It's a judgment of God. God did it. And I believe Satan done it. And I believe you've done it yourself. But COVID-19 is a judgment of God, and there are more. And there will be more. Consume them death. Taken in diseases. But they have refused, refused to receive correction. They're like, nope, not going to get right. <laughs> Again, that's the kid with, with the cookie. Mom tells him, don't take the cookie. Go there and take the cookie. Dad whips his hiney. He gets up. And he goes back in and takes two more cookies. I ain't, li I ain't listening to you. I ain't listening to you. There it is. They have made their faces harder than a rock. And the Bible describes them as, as flint. The Bible describes them stiff-necked. And the Hebrew race of people are but you better not curse them. For they, they have refused to return. See that return? That's repenting. You know, there are Christians, there are people in churches in the world today, they refuse to repent because they don't want to get right. And then there are, there are people in their pulpits, in their podiums that get up and they you don't need to repent. That's silly old thing. Just tell God how loving, careful you are. We see a group of people, the Jews, refusing what God wants them to do. And it just gets out worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse by the time we get to the end of Jeremiah. Now, verse 4, I want you to look at interesting. And as we go into verse 4, we're going to look at another piece of scripture. But I want you to 
Look at that word poor. And I want you to ask yourself, what is the definition of poor? Because I'll tell you, I've read through my Bible. This I got marked in this Bible. I read through the Bible every year since 2001. And I've read it countless, countless times and studied passages count and countless times. And I learned the definition of that poor word today. Scripture with scripture. Now I've met a man that does not give you the scripture. But watch. Think about the word poor in your mind for a minute. And then I'm going to show you another piece of scripture. And the, the scripture I'm going to read you and the scripture I'm going to read to you next threw away the whole poor that I had the misconception to, to, to today about the word poor. I know what you're thinking. Somebody's broke. Yes. But, therefore I said, surely these are poor. All right, if I stop right then and there. what do you, Okay, they're broke. They have nothing. And yet, don't you know a group of people today going through the COVID-19? Don't you, don't you see people? They, everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got electronic goo gads and doodads and toys. So, not really looking at the word poor as in broke. They are foolish. Oh, I said that the other day about somebody false teaching. When I got blasted, I'll be the danger of the judgment. That's God calling somebody foolish. Well, you're not God. Yeah, but with the scriptures, the fool in his heart that said there's no God. You know how many times I call atheists on the street foolish? <clears throat> with scripture? For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. Now we saw judgment in verse 1. All right, they are poor and foolish because they know not the way of the Lord Jehovah. All capital L-O-R-D. And they don't know the judgment of their God. That makes them poor and foolish. Now let me give you a clue before we go to a Bible verse. But you can be rich and be poor. Revelation chapter 3. And if you know where, where the passages in the Bible where I, where I frequently go to, you know where I'm going. And I'm going to show you something. Revelation chapter 3 about the lad to see in church age. At the end of verse 17, we're going to look at what God says about the church age. We're not going to read the rest. It says, God says, thou knowest. Does that sound familiar? That's what Jeremiah said. Thou knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You know why your churches today are not poor? Look at the cars in their parking lot. Look at, I mean, they're, they're, they're wonderfully, gorgeously arrayed. And they got, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, I, I, I did accounting for, they got a lot of assets. And they bring a lot of money in, some of them. And yet they can be poor, and how can they be poor? They know not the way of the Lord or the judgment of their God. They go about pretending to know God. And in reality, when you finish Revelation chapter 3, Jesus Christ is standing outside their church door. And they don't even know Jesus is knocking. They don't even know where Jesus is. And they don't realize the things that they're doing in their church is angering God. As what the Jewish people are doing to Jeremiah. Said, oh, God loves us. God is great. I mean, we... You know, we left off burning incense to the Queen of Heaven. This is why we got all troubles and problems. No. 
Well, you see, we get more sanitizer. We have masks. We put signs on the chair. No one can sit for six feet and this and that. And we, and we get these industrial air cleaners for their things. And, and they don't realize God has departed. And they got other things. And they are rich. They call themselves rich, but yet they're poor because they know not the way of the Lord. How simple is for some churches when the Bible says Jesus himself going all the world and preach the gospel and they send their people out. Invite them to Sunday church. Invite them to church. Invite them to That's not what the Bible said. You do not know the way of the Lord. Be separate. And yet they don't separate themselves. They tag on. All oh, buddies allowed in our church. We welcome everybody. We'll even bring in the world. And we talked about face painting the other night. Face painting is not something the disciples done. Can you see Peter? If he were to walk into a VBS during the Jesus time, which they didn't have VBS. Can you see they walk, they're doing face paintings in the cross? Can you just see Peter? He smacked that, that war paint off their face. And scrub his hand with gasoline. I will get me unto great men. And will speak unto them. For they have known, Revelation 3. Revelation 3, they don't know. That known the way of the Lord. And the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bond. Israel does not know the way. Israel has no idea. Judah has no idea. But I, well, they're poor and foolish. What God say about the one that does know judgment? What about the ones that do know the way? God says those are great men. And there are men in the pulpits and podiums of churches, and they're just outright change. They King James Bible, but they are changing the word. They are, we're in the Greek. My professors, my school, the pastor I sat under said, oh, he may not be a great person. He may be a poor, foolish person. Don't you say that about me. Wherefore, now watch this, verse 6. A lion. You know what a lion is? The devil. You say, well, Jesus Christ, lion of the tribe of Jesus. Okay, let's be on. A lion out of the forest shall slay them. A wolf, that's not Jesus. A wolf comes in sheep clothing. A lion comes as the enemy. Of the evenings shall, the, shall spoil them. A leopard, Hosea, 13, 7, lion. Daniel, 7, 4 through 7, the wolf. The leopard, Revelation 13, 12 to 17. You see, verse 6, that's the Antichrist. The lion of the devil, the wolf as the false prophet, and the leopard is the Antichrist himself. He's the animal that's got all three colors of the races of man. White, yellow, and black. There's a say Trinity in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 6, but I, I don't read the Old Testament. And fascinating, I was in a church today, and we were doing Exodus chapter 19. We're in the Old Testament. Do a little thing, but we're in the Old Testament. And he talked about there when we moved to Exodus, Leviticus, and not. Hey, we're in the Old Testament. All right. Shall watch over their city. You don't want the Antichrist watching over your city. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces. You take that into tribulation. Because their transgressions are many. And their backslidings have increased. <laughs> there you go. Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. Put my marker down. Put my 
marker, I can move the thing on the screen. There's been times I've done it and I forget to move the screen for the people watching. So there's the Antichrist, the unholy trinity. You do know there's an unholy trinity. There's the devil, Satan. There's the, the Antichrist, devil incarnate. And then there's the false prophet. How shall, how shall God, I, pardon thee for this? God says, I'll, you can find somebody. And then there, there's somebody as wicked. God says, I can't. Though he won't. And that's Satan and a devil, the old dragon, the serpent, or the Antichrist himself. Though they rent, repent. God can never pardon them. They're beyond. Because they're never going to admit their sin. So God cannot pardon them. So don't worry about their wickedness. They'll be dealt with in the lake of fire that burns forever. How shall I pardon thee this? Thy children have forsaken me. So forsaking God, you can't get a pardon. You're condemned. In order to get that pardon, you've got to return. You've got to repent. You've got to get right. You've got to confess to a holy and righteous God that you have done him wrong. And I'm one of them people that, all right, confess. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Pardon. But if all possible, we are also to make right to those that we've done wrong. When I got saved, I wrote my dad a letter. I, I named out, said, Dad, I stole money from you, blah, 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 blah. However, whatever I, I need to do to pay you back. And, and when, when I've done wrong to my wife, not only did I confess it before God, but I went up to my wife and I said, well, what, what could I do to make it right? And a co-workers and a boss. And friends. And where I have been wrong, not only have I confessed my sins, but I try to go up to that person and make it right. You're never going to get the devil to do that. And there are people who are so far gone, they're not going to do it, and they can't receive that pardon. So when you, you got yourself just saying a prayer, to say a prayer, and even worse, so, you know, you haven't been taught about sin. You know, you want to go to heaven? Okay, say this prayer. Where is the pardon definition that you are guilty of something? If you're not guilty of something called sin, you can say one million quadrillion prayers every minute. And if you're not sorry, you're not telling God you are guilty. For There's no pardon. The definition of pardon. Is, now we get presidential pardons. The president pardons so many people when he gets out. They don't proclaim to be innocent. They, I mean, they don't proclaim to be guilty. And a lot of those people, you know, it, it's political nonsense. Or a race issue. That's not the definition of a pardon. And the president and all to be involved with that will be guilty of violating the word itself of the English language, pardon. And you can look that word up in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You don't need the Hebrew or Greek. So here's that pardon again. So who has been mentioned to be pardoned? No one. The children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. There's the condition of Judah and Israel. They're serving no gods. Now it's funny because I like crossword puzzles. And today I was doing a crossword puzzle. 
and you learn things, and you, it keeps your brain, you know, sometimes they'll ask you the same question. And today, was one of the questions was a Greek god. E-R-O-S, Eros, Cupid. And how many Baptist churches, don't care about the Catholics, don't care about the how many Baptist churches had Cupid this year in their churches? The heart. Even the crossword puzzle tells you that's a Greek god. You're, and how many churches had Esther? You said Easter. You said it wrong. It's Esther. There are, Catholic, there are Baptist Catholic churches that are with no gods. Eros, Estar, Tammuz Day, wrongly called Christ Mass, Tammuz Mass. Those are other gods, and they are in the Baptist church. We are in the time of, of Judah, in the time of Israel, called the time of Jeremiah. And when by the time we get end of Jeremiah, I say that because the Lord comes before we finish Jeremiah, judgment will fall, cities will be destroyed, people will die. Then there's coming a great book called Lamentations. That would be that would be Jacob's trouble. So we keep reading. When I had fed them to the full, that's America. America is full of gluttony and diet pills and diet program and fake diet means to lose weight and diabetes. I went to Sunday school today and I met four people, a group of a large group of people with myself that were that had diabetes problems, maybe five. And a couple of them were skinny. But we are a well-fed nation. That we waste food. Then they, uh, they then commit adultery. That's America. Assemble themselves by troops at harlots' houses. And that's a, that's a military. Isn't it ironic that when Joshua sent two military spies, they ended up in a harlot's house? I've sat down with men from Korea and Vietnam. And I've heard some disgusting stories on how the enemy used those women against our soldiers. I, I, I can't even, I won't even do it in private. But there it is. That's when soldiers are away, they're going to play. And the harlots are so occupied in Judah and in Israel, God says they assemble by troops. That's many men. There's a line. They got a revolving door. I'm trying to be nice. That's God speaking. Imagine Jeremiah just sitting back, but whoa. That's a loving, peaceful kind of great God saying, you know, you got a line outside the whorehouse. And they're my people. They were as fed horses in the morning. <laughs> and you well feed your horses. You I dated someone who, who had horses and all. And you, you know, you fed them and took care of them, gave them fresh water. And Everyone neighed, the sound of the horse would make, after his neighbor's wife, adultery. T today we would call that a cat call. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at that one. Jesus said to that, Whosoever looking upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with him. That's what they're doing. 
Are they not violating the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not look upon thy neighbor's wife? Well, they're, they're making cat calls. Look how plain and simple God is. I guess we'll have to get a modern Bible to change the wording. Because God is just so plain. So I, God, shall I, God, not visit for these things. Listen, God said all these sins, adultery, well fed. You realize know, God, people don't mention out of the pulpits, gluttony. There are going to be big, fat people walking up to the judgment seat, of, I mean, the great white throne judgment of God. You're going to say, one of the gluttony, look at you. Shall I call one of the Ethiopians that you can see their skin and bones and their belly bloated, not for food, but because they haven't eaten? They don't call them fat. I wonder what God will call them. You know, the Bible says that Ahu de dealt with the king of Moab and he was a very fat man. I think God said that about uh, Eli, the priest, too, something about being fat. You know, God calls them fat. Yeah, you don't like that, don't you? Imagine gluttony showing up the judgment seat of Christ in the great white throne judgment. Whistling at girls. Thinking about adultery. Say it, the Lord, and shall not my soul, God's soul, be avenged on such a nation as this? And if God can do it in such a nation as this, that is his people, what is he going to do as a nation such as America? And her pride. And don't tell me she's pride. I've heard her song. I'm proud to be American. Ba booty booty boo. A good nation under God, but not the God of the Bible. why preachers don't like me, why Christians don't like me. I speak the truth, and I kick your gods, and one of the gods I kick is your American God. It's not the God of the Bible. Go ye up upon her walls of Jerusalem, and destroy, this would be the enemy, but make not a full end. Take away her battlements, her armor, for they are not the Lord's. And Babylon and Nineveh will carry away captives. They will take people of redmond. He's not going to completely annihilate Israel, as some churches teach. They have Belial. Wait a minute. Verse 11, for the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dwelt very treacherously against me, saith the Lord. They have Belial that is to mimic the counterfeit, false representation. What is that word today for the church? Modern Bibles. We call them the counterfeit Bible. They counterfeited God. How'd they do that? Esther is our God. Come invite people to our Esther service. We'll even hide her eggs. So you can send your children out like sperm to find her eggs. Baptist Catholic. Oh, bring people with a big heart to our Eros service. You know, Eros service this year was on a Sunday. And we got a big heart for you. We know the three times, the two times a year that everybody comes to church and just invite your friends. Well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday, but we'll sing happy birthday to Jesus and we'll make a cake to Jesus and we'll buy copy paper and we'll buy cleaner and toilet paper to Jesus for the church building. 
so Jesus can wipe his butt with the with the paper towels and the paper and, and the toilet paper you buy. No. It's so the money, the, the stuff that you give to the church, they can take the money that was going to be spent for that and use it for other things. Yeah, I seen through that. I mean, you're going to have to pay for your dunking boot or something. You're going to pay for all that pizza. Yeah. They counterfeit it. You can counterfeit the Lord. And it's, listen, I don't care about the Catholics. I, I came out again. I'm talking about the churches I come out. Baptists. Uh, one Baptist church I was in, well, we're not, we can't play bingo. So they, they named it Jesus or something. I forget what it was. I don't know how to come in because there's two S's in G. I forget exactly what it was. But, you know, instead of saying B for B, they had another word and then they played but it was in Jesus' name. What these Christians do to imitate, to mimic, to false represent Jesus Christ today. It's ridiculous. Is it not he? Neither shall evil come upon us. Nothing bad is going to happen to us. Neither shall we see sword or fear. God loves us. God's going to take care of us as a nation. Six feet apart, wear your mask. Did you wash your hands? I've seen gallons of sanitizer in churches. I mean, the prophets shall become wind. What's wind? No value. Can you see wind? No. The word is not in them. Oh, ho. You know how many, listen again, you know how many Baptist churches the word is not in them? I can mention three from where I came from, Connecticut. I weren't members of, but boy, the word was not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. So, I mean, this is the condition of Judah. This is the condition of Israel. And this is the condition of America. And this is the condition of the world. Today. Jeremiah is your today news from the Bible. Nothing new under the sun, I think a man said in the Bible. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts. That host is all the hosts. Everything. Because he speak this word. What word? Thus shall it be done unto us. No, Nothing wrong is going to happen to us. There will be no, no sword or famine. Everything is going to be great. Just to get your vaccine, you'll be hunky-dory. Say a prayer. Come to the fellowships. Invite people to church. I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people, now he's, now he's speaking to Jeremiah, this people would. And it should devour it. Jeremiah, your word is going to shoot out like fire and it's going to burn the people. Do you know where that cross reference is? That people don't read the Old Testament? Jeremiah becomes a type of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Check it out, Revelation 19. That sword that comes out of Jesus' mouth and that fire that just devours the truths. That's the second advent. Lo, I, God, 
will bring a nation upon you from afar, Babylon, O house of Israel, the Nineveh. It's a mighty nation. It's an ancient nation. That'd probably be Nineveh, the Assyrians. The Babylon's kind of newish. A nation whose language thou knowest not. That's, you got to press one. Neither understand what thou sayest. That's where America's going with her languages today. We used to have to speak one language. In order to be a U.S. citizen, you had to learn English. That's not happening in today. Thy quiver, that's what holds arrows, is an open sepulcher, death. And there are mighty men. Not the great men. In verse... The great men that new judgment, verse 5. Mighty men, soldiers. And they shall eat up my thy harvest, your oil, your grapes, all your harvest, and thy bread, which thy sons and daughters should eat, they shall eat up thy flocks and thy herds. The enemy is going to come and devour your grocery stores. You know, American grocery stores today, and we, we were in a we were in a store the other day, and we don't quite go in all the time, and, and the shelves are dry. The shelves are empty. They shall eat up thy vines, grapes, and thy fig trees, figs, and shall impoverish, make poor, make famine, thy fenced cities, wherein thou trustest. You trusted in your fame. You trusted in your gold. You trusted in your silver. You trusted in your grocery store. America, wake up. They're saying there are nations in, in, in South America. They are traveling to America because there is no food. They've thrown their money in the streets. There's no value. In the first depression of America, there was no money, but there was plenty of food. There were soup kitchens. The next depression in America, you're going to have all the money you want, but there will be no food. And many of your unsaved financialists, your unsaved stock people, your unsaved who know it all, the know it all, that's come. It's not if it's going to come, it's when it will come. We know by the Bible it's coming today that the only way you're going to buy and sell is by Mark. That's it. Nevertheless, in those days, I read the other day that, 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 that someone told the President of Congress, we got to start building shipbuilding again because the Chinese has outdone us. I thought we were the nation of the greatest weapons. I thought we were the nation of the greatest army, navy, I mean, we just honored our vets today. We're defenseless. A couple of computer hackers came in and shut down the gas line. We got the greatest military in the world, but we couldn't conquer Afghanistan. And our soldiers are coming home sick and deformed. Better get in the Bible. Nevertheless, in those days, saith Lord, I will not make a full end with you. That's Israel. That's Judah. God will never, ever be finished with the nation of Israel. Now, he may punish them. He may kill some of them. He may send some of them to hell, but not all. Thank God I was in a Bible study today where they praised and honored the Jewish people. And we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up next time. Lord willing, on Jeremiah, the America today, and what Judah and Israel was then.